Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Anne Marie. Megan should be joining us momentarily. So fantastic. I have had such a crazy week and day that I forgot to stop and buy a bar of ivory soap. So I'm I'm literally using my <laughs> my, my caress soap. Um I, I'm in the process of moving and, and with and the, and the last minute move. So uh -huh. my life is completely in chaos. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I was looking forward to this for so long and I just feel very unprepared today. So bear with me. My brain is like sparking in different directions all at the same time. Hi, Megan. Hi. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. And thank you nice so much for you. doing this. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Steph. We're I'm excited. I'm excited too. Making two new new um Zoom and and internet friends and contacts and learning new stuff. And I've been wanting to learn how to do this for myself for a really long time. And when I saw your post, I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. So perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, great. And I don't know how big of a group we're going to have. Um, this time of year is kind of nutsy. Yeah. So we could I have agree. everybody that registered or five of us. It just, there's no way to know, but um, it'll be great no matter what. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So did you said you wanted to show a PowerPoint or? No, it's a Google slideshow. It's just the slides we showed at the conference that we presented the same thing at. Um, okay. So it just kind of goes through our trip to Italy and some images from that and a little bit of background about marble carving and then kind of bridges over to how we incorporated this into our classrooms. Fabulous, so. fabulous. So I am already recording because literally the last session I had, I forgot to hit record. <laughs> and we have no evidence of the last session. And I just, that that's how my life has been the last few weeks. Um, so I said, every time I set up a, a session, I automatically just make it automatically record because I can't remember just one more thing right now. <laughs> um, I made you both co-hosts. So you should have access to whatever you need to do. If you want to try out the screen share, yeah, let me try that. Um, I'm going to toggle over to the slides and then I'll share my screen. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. I'll just show the entire screen. screen. I think that's a lot easier. All right. So can y'all see it? Yep. yep. All right. Yes, carving it out. <laughs> and um, so did did we NCC ATA UFT Art Teachers Art Club? Is that correct? No, it, no, it's oh. not. It used to be. <laughs> it's Nicata N Y C A T A. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for right. catching that. Yes, I wouldn't have even have it would have gone oh. right over my head. Um, so this is correct now, correct? Nicata. UFT, yes, that is perfect. What does the UFT stand for? Um, United Federation of Teachers. Oh, so right. we are like supported and partnered with the union. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, with our union. Um, they, they fund a lot of the stuff that we do, so. That's really am I still sharing or no? I am. No. No, you're not sharing. Did you wanna be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I assume we'll begin this with you leading and then you'll introduce us. Kind yes. Of thing. What I normally do is just, you know, welcome everybody. Oh, I feel so off centered today. It's just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I welcome everybody back. And this is our uh, two and a half, second and a half years. So I don't have to go into the whole how this all began. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to know, I can tell you now. Sure. Uh, when COVID started, I 
kind of panicked because I was quarantining and I had to do art remotely. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do art remotely. <laughs> it's, it's hands on. It's, you know, yeah. um, so I kind of went into a panic and I reached out to people and um, I had been invited to the VAEA, which is a Virginia Art Educators mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. by a couple of friends that I made, Julie Cacciola, who's an art teacher down in yeah. Virginia. And she, mm -hmm. we, we became friends when we did um, the summer, summer Visions of Professional oh. Development in D.C. In D.C., I've done that. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it was been fantastic. So we've been in touch ever since. I think we did that in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And so she, she started posting things. She's like, why don't you join, you know, our, our VAEA Facebook page? I said, okay. And they started posting these Friday night draw things, which I was oh, like, I oh, love cool. those. They're so so I checked those out and I'm like, that's really neat. Why don't we have one of those for New York City? We're the, one of the biggest districts in the country. Like, why don't we have this? So I reached out to the union rep, who I know, and I'm like, well, why don't why don't we have this? Or do we have it and I don't know about it? And he's like, no, we don't. And why don't you start it? <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. So that's how I start. And I got in touch with um, Cheryl Neal and mm -hmm. Lee Darter who were running it. And I said, okay, so, and that's how I met them. Cause Julie put me in touch with them and they're like, well, this is how we do it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is what we do. And then, so I started offering it as part of our Nikata UFT thing and through their zoom and youtube channel we record everything and post every session that we did except the one that i totally forgot to record <laughs> this week um and that's it so i and i stalk people on facebook because i'm part of almost every single you know art teachers online group and when i see amazing things i go after you <laughs> <laughs> And you did. Yeah, <laughs> I awesome. did. I'm like, awesome. I want you. Um, and that I have met so many amazing people and people who are part of NISADA and NAEA. And it's like one person connects me to the next person, you know, and it's just an amazing way to, to network and meet people. And it has helped so many of us who were all in the same boat. Hi, Carolyn. Um, and it, it really helped us survive, not only as a way of learning how to do art through tech, you know, but also mm -hmm. as a sense of community. And we could, we were all, all going through the same thing and we needed support for each other. And, and that's just really, it helped me, you know, I was looking for a way to survive. And then in turn, what I needed to do for myself helped other people. And it just, I'm, 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 happily surprised that we're still going which is really cool that's great i missed the friday night draws like that was i agree with you it was like my saving grace during mm -hmm. the pandemic shutdown and it I, I had something to look forward to every yes. friday night and they just haven't been able to put them back together again you know well it's you know, everybody it on was a regular home, basis. so it was easier to schedule yeah. stuff in we weren't running around and being crazy and all over the place now it's hard because we're back in the building and we're out at other places for meetings and, and life is back to normal and it's hard to fit it in and commit to it. I mean, we all sign up, but then when the day comes, you know, life happens and can't always get there. So and that's another reason I record it because it's great stuff. And, you know, if I, if I were to want to see it and I miss it for whatever reason, at least there's a recorded resource that I can look at if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So and actually the lesson that we're covering today is a lesson that I first started teaching during that period of time, because I was teaching a crafts course and I was like, okay, well, we can't do some of the things I'm used to doing. So what can I afford to buy for 200 students and send home? And I knew I could afford a bar of soap. <laughs> and you so, actually got to send home supplies. Um, well, I, I 
hand delivered a lot of them. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I actually drove to my students' houses and left things on That's their front amazing. porches. And um, I also taught ceramics that year. It was the first year that we had a ceramics course, and it just happened to be <laughs> the virtual year. So I learned a lot that year. Um, How did you teach ceramics from remotely? I, I hand delivered all of the clay and all uh, the tools and then, you know, video. I mean, once you have the materials, obviously everything was pared down. And then I had a cart out front of the school and students could come and drop off greenware to be fired and then come back by and pick up their um, bisqueware. We did not glaze. So it was just, it was just bisking. If the in it that I made that not a requirement of the course because of course it would be difficult for some students to get to the school. But yeah, I'm amazed that you collected clay and fired it. Like mm -hmm. I I'm not a clay person. I've always wanted to do it, but I don't even I'm I'm terrified of the whole the <laughs> the kiln thing and whatnot. But <laughs> even remotely, I would have opted for like Sculpey and throw it in the toaster oven or something. But yeah, I just kind of felt like my kids signed up for ceramics and it was something I think we all needed at that period of time. You know, they needed their hands on some clay. They, they needed something authentic and tactile. And so we made it work. That's amazing. And everybody got their stuff to you without incident, without accidents and without those that chose to, yes. <laughs> what level do you teach, Emory? I teach uh, high school. High school, okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Hi, Linda. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hi. Nice to see you guys. So we usually start at about 10 after, give people a few minutes to dribble in and get their supplies ready. I don't know who's gonna work along or just watch. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for this whole process and I'm very jealous of your Italy trip. Oh, let's it, this whole having to teach this lesson inspired me to want to go learn how to do it and then led to that trip. So oh, it was a gift from COVID in a weird way. So. Well, you'll have to tell us about that too. Cause yeah, I'm sure. Amazing. That's amazing. All right, let's see who else is popping in. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Happy Thursday. The week is almost over. What's a great T word? Like, like, well, I was gonna say hump. What is it? I'm, my brain is just short circuiting. <laughs> It's over the hump Wednesday. What's the? Get through Thursday. Get through Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Count, countdown, countdown Thursday. Here we, uh, hump day, that's what it is. Wednesday is hump day, okay. And we'll have to figure out what Thursday and Friday. Well, TGIF is, is Friday. And this week it's most certainly TGIF. Mm-hmm. For sure. How's everything going at everybody's schools? Are your, your school years Good. doing okay? Are they improving? Are they still nutty? I can't complain at all. It's, it's, I've got a great bunch. That's good. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to really feel like I'm, uh, I teach high school technically, but I feel like I teach very tall elementary school kids now because they, they are just crazy. <laughs> That's my third period. <laughs> oh gosh. They're all big babies. I teach high school. Yeah, they, they can be big babies. Yeah. yeah. I teach high school as well. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot, still a lot of hand holding. I wonder if it's if it has become a universal um, regressing to a certain extent across the. I, I I think so. Yeah, I think it's like learned helplessness. Yeah. yeah. Enabled helplessness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I 
you know, they'll, they'll ask questions and, I'm, and it's like, you could have easily figured that out, you know what I mean? But it's just easier just to ask, you know, ask me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've noticed you know, that rather... it is such a great effort to just try to problem solve on their own. Yeah. And the unless it has something to do with cheating or, you know, whatever, <laughs> then they're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely brilliant well we'll find out a few years from now <laughs> we'll yeah. see where they end up yeah exactly i mean that's that's the thing we don't you know we don't necessarily get to see you know what what happens i mean you know i figure you know if they are going to college um you know it's it's a rude awakening but even if they if they don't go to college and they get a job it's another rude awakening mm -hmm. because you know no I, I was just reading a muse like one day you're going to realize you're going to you're going to meet people that aren't paid to tolerate you right you know? exactly and, and, yeah and exactly. That, you know that's some of that you know that we that you know i don't get it you want to come in late every day great but you're not going to get a paycheck for that you know, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I get a lot of kids who come back after graduation, whether they're out working or um, they've gone to college and they come back and they're like, miss, this is hard. And I'm like, um, yeah, I kind of told you that this would be the easiest time of your entire life right now. And you just didn't listen. You didn't listen. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. That's the only thing I would go back for is the lower amount of responsibilities. You know, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't want, I would not want puberty again. I would not want, you know, the whole right. social navigational learning curve, uh, you know, peopling. I would just want no bills. You know, no, <laughs> no yeah. all night, you know, lesson planning and working and, and running around and food shopping and cooking and, and laundry and, you know, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but there were so many unknowns. I feel like, you know, that's what made it just so hard that there were so many, so many, you know, like, I mean, well, I feel like now it's easier. I mean, it's it's harder in terms of there's some more competition in terms of getting into college or getting a job or whatever um, than it was, you know, when I was when I was in high school. I I mean, you know, you still had to kind of wonder if you were going to get accepted or whatever. But I I feel like it's so much harder now, you know. And with, I mean, I don't remember anyone doing SAT classes or anything like that when I was in high school. Maybe I didn't go to a very, you know, astute high school, but you know, you took the SAT twice, you know, and then I was like, all right. Well, I think there's also it's it's harder to get in now because their ability is so lowered from when we were in school. That too. Everybody's yeah. reading levels is low. Everybody's math levels is low. We, you know, they had an expectation when we were in school and yeah. we met it. They didn't yeah. lower the expectations because we couldn't meet them when we were in school. Like they did now they've lowered everything across the board, which has made everything easier for the kids to do. And they still think it's too hard. So that when they get in into the, that's why when they get into the real world, they're like, what is going on? Like, it, this isn't supposed to be so hard. Um, <laughs> yep. Because at least in New York, they have really lowered, like they say they, they're adding more rigor and they're doing all of this, but they're not making it so the kids have to rise. They're lowering so the kids don't have to move anywhere, which is why there's kind of staying. They're not growing. They're not yeah. mentally being challenged enough. And I think a lot of them are bored because, but they also don't know how to handle how to learn because their attention yeah. spans are broken. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, absolutely. I think there's there's so many issues involved. It, it's not like, okay, if we could fix this one thing, then this will work because they're all kind of interconnected. Yeah. And yeah. everything has to be overhauled. And I really, I don't know. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> If I think about it too much, I get really frustrated. I get really, because I feel like like my hands are tied and I just have to, I'm just told, yeah. well, this is what we have to do. So just do it. And, yeah. and, and I sit back and like, well, how is that helping anybody? That's right. much what I, what I sit there and I, how is that really helping anybody? What are we teaching them by doing that or whatever? Yeah. Oh, we need change. That's what I kind of love about, you know, I'm elementary. Like, there are no rules. And I mean, yes, I have a curriculum and all, but because they aren't really getting real grades, I could challenge them as high as I want and push them and just do it because they're not going to fail art. You know, they're not, they're not, I don't have, I'm not giving them A's, B's, C's, you know what I mean? How do you grade them? Um, well, I will say I don't like grading it because, um, because uh, we don't see them as regular as like a high school or middle school teacher would, you know, but like the little kids, um, K through two, it's on like, um, what does it say? can do with a little help. It's it's like, can do it independently. And it's- So you don't met, give alpha or numeric grades? Nope, give not even, not little kids about, nor big kids. So you give like progress reports? Kind of progress things. And then the big kids, third through fifth, I don't like it, I don't like, I don't like it. I like the little kid thing because you could say, oh, they, um, I think it's limited proficiency met standard, approaching standard. Yeah, so limited proficiency, approaching standard, met standard. Okay. And that's kind of easy to, you know, and it's easy to say, okay, your child needs a lot of help. It's okay, you know, because they're a kindergarten or whatever, uh, you know, or, you know, um, but with older kids, we have, I have to think of the order. U, U is the lowest, unsatisfactory. N is needs improvement. S, satisfactory. And E, I don't know excellent. if it's excellent, excellent. exceeding, whatever. Right. right. So I have most time across the board just to, because I'm going to push them as far as I could push them in my class, no matter what. I'm going to like challenge them. Um, so I just kind of across the board, they get an S most of the year, unless they are like some of my fifth graders right now that yeah. I've worked and worked and worked and contact parents, then they might get lower. And then, you know, as they start to get do things more independently, like, because I let go of them more and more by the end of the year, mm -hmm. then they E, excel, exceed, whatever, right. da, da, da. Unless Where do you teach, one, Carolyn? Texas. What, um, is, what is that what is praxis you said no i said tech i live in oh, texas Tex <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no i live in texas <laughs> okay um but, let, let's get yeah. this party started and i'll just shut up and sit back and <laughs> <laughs> all right so tonight is carving it out with Anne Marie and Megan, who I found on Facebook, of course, and they are lovely enough to be teaching us the same class that they taught at the which conference was it? Uh, the BAEA conference uh, last month in Virginia. Right, Virginia Art Educators um, Conference. Right. So um, I can't wait. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I hope you guys are as excited as me. And we are actually recording. I keep looking at that button to make sure it doesn't go away. Um, so I will hand it over to you ladies. And shall I, would you like me to pin you 
to the screen. Um, I can do that. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, but can you pin both of us and can no. we share a screen at the same time? Oh, okay. Cool. I don't know how to do the sharing thing, but you could both be pinned at the same time. Great. Cool. Zach. That'd be great, especially for there like, we go. Yeah. Okay. So great. I see I see both of you at once. I don't know if everybody else sees both of you, but mm. we're good. Okay. Take it away. All right. Uh, well, I'm Anne Marie Slinkman. I'm a high school teacher from Virginia. Um, and I'm presenting here with Megan. Hi, I'm Megan. I teach in Virginia as well, and I teach secondary in an alternative school setting. Um, so we um, recently took a trip to Italy and um, did some marble carving for a week, which was a lifelong dream, at least for me, I think for both of us. Yep. Um, and so tonight we're going to share a little bit about our trip, kind of what we learned, and then how we brought that back to our classroom. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen because we have some slides to show you guys. All right. Can everybody see? Yes, ma'am. Yay. Okay. So we presented this same um, lesson to the VAEA um, at the VAEA or Virginia Art Education Association conference just about a month ago. So these slides are the same slides that we were sharing then. Um, and so yeah, let's just go. So here's our agenda. Ignore the collect ticket ticket. Sorry, forgot to take that out. Uh, but we're going to talk about marble carving in Azzano, Italy. Um, and then soap carving, just kind of how you can plan it, possible lesson plans. Um, and then we'll talk about other media that you might be able to use in your classroom if you want to push subtractive carving a little bit further. So um, we, I, so to start at the beginning, um, I became interested in this. I mean, I've always wanted to carve marble, but I became truly interested in pursuing an experience in Italy to carve marble um, during the pandemic, actually. I teach crafts in, in a high school setting. And when the pandemic hit, I couldn't teach the lessons that I normally taught. Um, so I was trying to figure out how I could put together a kit for my students that they could come to the school and pick it up or I could deliver it to their house um, that I could afford to buy enough materials for 200 students, um, which was a big challenge, obviously. So after thinking about how I could kind of pare down my curriculum and what I could actually afford, I came to soap carving. Um, it's clean, it's inexpensive, um, it's something that doesn't take a lot of space or specialized tools, and so I thought it was a good choice. Um, and so after I kind of, you know, I was teaching this to six different classes, uh, it's, it was a natural sort of progression to think about, wow, I would really like to push this further and learn more about this type of, um, this type of art, you know, subtractive carving is really kind of hard. Um, and so I started doing research and I decided, yeah, I really want to take this trip to Italy and learn how to carve marble. And Megan, do you want to share a little bit about what brought you to it? Um, well, Anne Marie brought me to it. Um, I um, I won a grant a few back in 2018 and went to Fabriano, Italy, and did bookbinding um, and paper making in the Fabriano traditional manner. And um, I, I think during the pandemic, I was thinking about going back and doing another course in in Fabriano, and I was like, no, I want to learn something else that's more traditional, um, that has roots in Italy, and um, so Anne-Marie brought it, you know, the idea of going to Atzano to do marble carving. And I said, let's go. And I was able to use the rest of my grant money uh, to go to Atzano and try this thing out. So yeah, that's what we did. And it was it was amazing. So Atzano is this tiny little town up in the mountains in Tuscany. Um, and it's way up there. It's really difficult to get to. But this um, place that we went to was called Campo del Altissimo. And it was an art camp started by a German man named Peter Rosen. Um, and it had been going on for, I think, about 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have painting courses, but they also have uh, marble carving. And so we spent a week. It's normally a two-week course, but we ended up just staying for one week um, carving our piece of marble. Yeah. So most, most of the, of the students, 
Yeah, most of the people that were there were from Germany. And so we had a big language barrier um, at times. And, um, you know, when you're in class, you want to hear what your instructor has to say, but, you know, by talking to other students, so you learn the process. So we had to kind of really watch with our eyes a lot more than with our ears, um, because a lot of the instruction was given in German and um, we would get individualized instruction yeah. in English once in a while. Yeah. But um, if you know anything about Germans, they speak pretty good English generally. And so most of the people in our class were English speaking, you know, bilingual, but when they were speaking to one another, it was generally in German. So it, it was a little bit of a challenge there. Yeah. But so the first day, this was really cool. They brought us down to the riverbed. Um, and this was just this summer. And I don't know if you know that Italy and most of Europe is, or was this summer anyway, in a very big drought, a multiple year long drought. And so what you're seeing here is supposed to be, um, there's supposed to be water there, but there was no water. But this riverbed has carried down chunks of marble from the top of the mountain. And this mountain is where Michelangelo got his marble when he was carving all of his most famous pieces. So he actually built the road um, up to the mine on this mountain. But so we went down into the riverbed. It was the same quality marble that Michelangelo used, just washed down the river. And we each were tasked with choosing a stone with which to carve. So. Um, this is me actually standing with my little rock. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we learned a lot. It, it, a one week, I will say, is not enough to really gain any real skill as a marble carver. <laughs> it was much harder than I expected. Um, but here you can see there's Megan. Her stone was a little bit smaller than mine, and she's removing the skin. So you can see that kind of this dark surface. So the first step is to just use tools to kind of take that skin off of it so you expose you know the the fresh marble um, and then you start kind of whittling it down and so um, we spent about 36 hours over the week um, very labor intensive but really a very kind of soothing process it was really enjoyable the whole the whole experience was really enjoyable but um, as you can see this is nowhere near a finished piece of finished sculpture. Um, but we learned a lot about, you know, how to use different tools and just the entire process. So although I wasn't able to finish a sculpture, I really feel like I learned a lot that I could bring back. And it did inspire me to hopefully I'll be able to make my way back and, and spend two weeks instead of the one that I did. Do you want to add anything to that, Megan? Um, I would like to add, I hated this process, like <laughs> the removing of the skin. I had in my head, I was so angry with my stone. I was angry with the stone. And so I <laughs> took too much and I have lots of little dimples in my sculpture that I still have to go back and do, you know, remove layers upon layers to get it 100% smooth. But um, like Amory said, two, one week was not enough because I, fe I felt rushed to get to a certain mm -hmm. point so that we had something to take back with us. But um, yeah, it was, but at the same time, I thought my arms would hurt. I thought I would be exhausted at the end of the day and I never felt tired and never felt weak. I felt strong mm -hmm. enough to do it. Yeah, so it was very cool. So uh, we learned a lot about like just different tools, um, tool usage. So here are just some pictures of some of the different tools um, that we used. Obviously, um, the chisels over here are the most common tools you're going to use, but you can see in here, as you get closer towards the end, you're really refining that form and you're smoothing it out using a variety of different tools. And it took so about one whole day just to smooth it out and go from sandpaper to sand or from rasp to sandpaper to sandpaper to sandpaper to sandpaper. I mean, yeah. it was a, a, a long process just to sand it down. But it took you four use, full you days. Sandpaper on the stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we started with um, a, a tough, a rougher grit, and went down to like a water-based sandpaper. Um, yeah. And the water, and we could have taken it to another level and made it shiny, but um, I chose not to go that shiny route. Nor did I have any more time left. Yeah. But you know, we used sandpaper on the rock. Wow! But you start oh. with the. I'm sorry. I just said, wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. Just wow. So 
this is the most common tool that we use though. Now I will say most sculptors nowadays use power tools. We did not have access to that, this. So our experience was very much like Michelangelo's experience. Like we were using that kind of level of tool, um, very traditional um, and more labor intensive. So the point chisel was what we used for 90% of the time. But then as you get closer towards the end, you know, you smooth out areas or you know, smooth out lumps. Um, and so it, it's it's just lots and lots of different yeah. types of chisels and smoothing. But then we finally got to smoothing it down, which actually was, in my opinion, the most gratifying part of the process. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but this was our teacher. His name was Sven Runger and he was um, a German man who you know, has taught there for several years. And these are some examples of his work. His work is really small. It's kind of hard to tell in the photos, about, um, but this, would you say this could fit in his hand? Oh maybe? yeah, yeah, almost all of his work he could fit in, his, in the hand. So it was, after what we experienced, I can't imagine doing this. This looks so difficult and complicated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he was a great teacher and we learned quite a bit from him. Um, but then of course, after we left Italy, we were like, okay, so we're gonna bring this back to our classrooms. Um, and we teach in really different contexts. So it was really interesting to kind of see how this fit into our different classrooms. So um, we started with soap and soap is sort of the most, I think, accessible um, material to use if you're using subtractive carving with students, mm -hmm. um, because it's really easy to carve. It's safe to use for all students. You know, you might have a student here or there who might have a, a sensitivity to different types of fra fragrances or something that might be in the soap, but generally it's, it's pretty safe to use. Um, it's really affordable and it's really easy to find and easy to clean up. So um, that's why it's a good choice. The things that are kind of cons with it is, you know, it's kind of small. Um, so sometimes you can find a larger bar of soap, but most of, most of us, you know, we're using ivory soap with our students and um, it works fine. And it's kind of an extra challenge to work small, but it's, you know, that's just one kind of not the best quality, I guess, of, of this process. Yeah. Um, and it breaks uh, easy. Um, yeah. Some of the soaps will break easier than others. Um, older soaps, I found older soap, that really nice old soap I found in my linen closet and gave to my students. And it was a completely different kind of experience and they liked it better because it almost mm -hmm. like shaved off instead of like mm -hmm. cutting big hunks out of it. Uh -huh. So finding different soaps and kind of experimenting with that is kind of cool. So um, I have found that clay tools are the best tools to use um, with soap. So if you brought clay tools today and you're working along with us, that's a great choice. Um, you can also use stylus sticks. When I sent this home with my students during COVID, I gave them a toothpick, a stylus stick, and a paper clip. And that's all we had. Oh, and a plastic knife. And those were the only tools they had, and they made great work with just so simple tools. So um, here are some examples of my students' work from this year, because I, I taught it in the beginning of this year. And you can see there's kind of a big variety of approaches. We just talked about technique and did practice, and then they made their own. Um, so it really allows students to create a variety of forms with ease, which is a really great quality with the soap. Um, and we just talked about, you know, realism, abstraction, or non-representational, and I, I left it very open for them. Um, it takes about two weeks to finish this project um, the way I've taught it with, you know, doing a practice sculpture, and then with that new understanding of the medium, planning and creating another piece, so uh, about two weeks. And um, for this particular um, assignment, I teach high school kids. So for their final piece, they had to consider all sides. You know, they had to hide the fact that it was ever a piece of soap. Um, and an extra challenge was to create a hole through the soap without breaking the soap um, and then adding texture and details. So I have all these videos that I made with my students that I shared when I presented this, um, you know, when, when Megan and I presented this in, at the VAEA conference. And I'll be happy to share them um, with you all when we, you know, if you want to just send me your um, contact information, I'll be happy to share it with you all. But I thought we would just make one together today. Okay. So I brought 
soap. I think Megan brought some too. I got three different kinds. Oh, nice. <laughs> I just have ivory soaps, like tried and true. So um, I just thought we could kind of go through the process that I use with my students. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but you all can still see me, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Um, and I'm going to see if I can turn this. Oh, you made it work. It's perfect. Yeah. perfect. Well, this is this is what I did those COVID years. <laughs> this is how I demoed for my students. So I just turned the camera down. Um, so I have my ivory soap here. And what I had my students do um, to kind of plan out what they wanted to do, I, I told them not to take the paper off in the beginning, but it doesn't really matter. With kids, I think it's more important. But I would have them trace it twice. And this was just so that they get the exact size and shape of the bar of soap on their paper. And I'd have them kind of plan out what they want to do in the front and then what they would want the back to look like, just to get them thinking about, you know, sculpture, how it looks different from different angles. Um, so that is kind of where we should start. Um, my tips for you all as, as you plan, um, if this is the first time you've carved soap, I would say keep it simple, okay? Don't try to get too complicated. Um, and then when you're planning out whatever it is you might wanna do for your soap sculpture, like I usually do a, a fish as a kind of demo creature for my my students because it's it's something that's very accessible to everyone. You know, it's not, Nobody's going to be overwhelmed by the form of a fish. It's just, you know, super simple. But um, that's kind of where I usually start. I tell them to do a fish. I do have some examples of my students' work that I brought home with me so you can kind of, kind of see the size and how they worked out. This was one of my favorites, the little ear. This student did ended up doing a really delicate um, I pulled Eiffel Tower. tower. It's yeah. incredible. Like, I don't know how she did this without breaking it. Um, it's really ni nice, non-representational kind of two links together. Are those all ivory soap? Yeah, they're all ivory. Wow. I just gave each of them. They had they got two bars of soap for me. They got one bar to practice. Mm -hmm. So the bar to make all the mistakes and kind of figure out the tools and the qualities of the material. Um, and then the second bar was their final. And they could do whatever they want. Is it great? So um, what I tell my students, like when they're making their little practice one, I tell them, if you want the front and the back to be identical, then just draw one and you can flip it. Um, but if you want to make the sides look different for any reason, then you would plan the front and the back. OK, so um, once you have it planned, And I'm just doing this fish just as a quick demo for you guys so you can move on and do it yourselves. But I tell them to cut it out. Okay. Um, and there are two different ways to sort of transfer your design onto the soap. And it really depends on whether you have a lot of interior details or not. So obviously super simple thing here, right? I'm not trying to make a masterpiece. I'm just trying to like demo quick. But so I have my little fish. Um, I tell them to cut off any of the paper that is not part of the fish. So like the outline, right? So I cut it out, but I'm still gonna have a whole bunch of lines like the, I might have details that I added on the interior. If it's a fish, I have the gills and the eye, right? I have little things that are not part of the outline. And so those I'm going to transfer differently, all right? So I have my little fish here. And I don't know how it ended up being so much bigger than my... All right. So I set it down on my bar of soap, and I just trace around the outline of it. And I do this with a pencil or a toothpick or a stylus, pretty much whatever you have around, okay? Oops. 
but you're drawing the outside line. This is kind of an older bar, so. Um, this gets messy quick. So you might want to have a plate or a piece of cardboard or something to keep your area tidy. But once you have, let me kind of fix this. My fish is going to be weird looking. Um, once you have transferred the outside, I like to use a toothpick for the inside part. But I lay it down and anything that um, is an interior detail, you poke holes to create a line. So I don't know if y'all can see that, but you kind of like poke holes and that will transfer to the soap. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's just two different ways to transfer the image. Did you do anything different with your students, Megan? No, except okay. that we traced it with a pencil. Because uh -huh. um, I can't have toothpicks. Right. right. You can't have toothpicks? I work in a, in a juvenile um, correctional facility. Wow. So my limitations um, are more extreme. Um, however, it also translates to more of an elementary way of doing it um, mm -hmm. that can be adapted to elementary. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, so once you transfer your image and you can do, you know, both sides, if you're going to use the same image for both sides and you want to flip it in the opposite direction when you're tracing on the opposite side so that they're going in the, you know, they they are the same direction. Make sure you don't just like flip the soap over because then they'll be going in opposite directions, if that makes sense. Just make sure that the face is on the same side. <laughs> but once you have yours traced, then you can start using your tools and you can start roughing out the form. Um, like I said, I have found that uh, clay tools work great. So you can carve away large areas. Now I'm using an older bar of soap. I didn't realize this was as old as it is, but it is a little bit harder to carve. But Megan, you said your kids liked when it shaves like this, right? They did. And, yeah. and they used water to help with the dryness of it. And um, at times they would stick the bar of soap underneath the water and just kind of hold it and rub it for a couple of minutes. And it just would help soften it. We also found, and we did not try it at my school, um, I found that um, some source saying that you could even put it in the microwave to make it softer. Um, but since we have a one microwave with, that's where food's prepared, we decided not to use the microwave. That might um, be not the best choice in school. So no, yeah. I really wanna try the microwave though at some point um, and just to make sure it won't blow up. Yeah. Oh, real quick. Let me just say, I just saw somebody in the chat um, put their email down. Um, if I anybody understand. wants the links that um, are in the presentation or want some information, um, put your email in the chat and I will put it in a doc to, okay. to send everything out to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So does anybody have any questions so far, like what we're doing? steps to do this, questions about materials or tools. I actually have a thought. What do you guys do with all the removed soap? I have a bag of it. Where did my bag go? Oh, here's my bag. I have a bag of it from the conference. It is quite a lot of little bits of soap. And that is my next challenge is that I'm going to figure out what to do with it. I've Wait, heard that you can you melt, like melt it down and melt make down. another bar or something. I think, yes, that's what I've heard you can do. Somebody else said you can use it as, um, as almost like a glaze. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to do some research into that because I think that it's just, you, you've got so much. My students took it back to their housing units and used it, uh, which I, they didn't want any piece to go unused, which I thought was really cute. Um, I even have some sitting at my sink at my in my classroom that kids can use like a big hunk 
and wash their hands with so that we're not wasting it. Right, right. Yeah, so um, unfortunately with 200 kids, I just, we just threw it away. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I have, a, I think at like most teachers or art teachers, I have a little bit of a hoarder in me and I just sometimes need to be like, nope, nope, this is gonna go in the trash. So, <laughs> so I did not keep mine, but, um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of start carving. I'm not sure this is gonna be a fish this time. I just, that's my normal demo mm -hmm. um, because it's just such a quick form. Yeah. Does anybody- I'm, I'm using plastic clay tools today. Nice. Um, even though I have the other clay tools, um, but I'm trying out my plastic clay tools that um, I did not realize I had in my classroom um, just to see how great that works. And they're doing just fine. Mm -hmm. Just fine. So um, I have the green have plastic a, ones. I yeah. have, a, I have a, a question about. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you gave them a bar um, to practice with. Mm -hmm. Did you was it the same instruction? Like you know, create a template and you know you get to try once and then you can do it again. Or were they just trying out the tech tools with that? Or Good question. Um, so for the, our practice one, I gave them uh, a few choices of things that they could do. Um, I demonstrated with a fish and I said, that's a pretty approachable thing. I think, you know, most of you will be fine with the fish. Um, if you don't like the idea of a fish, you could do a face, you know, but just keep it simple. So for our practice one, you know, the final one had to have a hole going through it, had to completely hide the fact that it was ever a bar of soap. It was a lot more rigorous. With the practice one, they had to pick something, you know, concrete to create just so that they had something to anchor the process. But it was really about, um, you know, getting in there with the tools, refining the form, just learning about the, the process in general. Um, so yeah, a fish is sort of our go-to because it's really easy to make it big enough. You know, it's just an approachable form. Um, Don't start with the turtle. Do not start with right. the turtle. The Why turtle, not? all of the arms or the tail will inevitably be broken off. And um, we started with the turtle with really, really soft soap and it was a disaster. And so we went back and tried it again with just a fish. And then that gave them that confidence. And then we went into trying something else. They, um, I think they did seashells after this, but we did like an aquatic theme in the end. Mm -hmm. And if you teach in Virginia and um, your SOLs are like creating a, um, a, a sequence, um, what is it? What is the SOL for Art 3, Amber-Marie, that's um, you need to create um, a series, a series, a series, not a sequence, a series. Um, I was able to do that with soap. So they created their own little aquatic theme with soap. Well, for, for, and for my students, I just, I let them do whatever they wanted for the second one once they learned how to use the tools and just the properties of the soap in general. Then I opened it up to just really whatever they wanted. Um, but of course, now they have an understanding of how delicate it is, how much you know control they could get over the medium. And so uh, it helped them make wise choices about what they chose to do. And um, since every student is different, it kept them engaged, just letting them do whatever. Um, people seem to enjoy the process. Is it the same process as whittling? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, any subtractive carving is probably going to be similar in that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but the thing about like whittling wood is that you have to use uh, sharper tools. Yeah. You know, I have wood and I have um, wood carving tools in my classroom, um, but it's just, you really need to have the students wear gloves. Um, and even then you might end up needing some band-aids at some point, <laughs> yeah. um, which, you know, I try to avoid, but um, the, the soap is a little bit more forgiving in that way. Right. Has anybody else done this in their classroom before and have any insight or feedback? I have not. Okay. 
I love the idea of it. Well, what I also love about the soap is that it's not intimidating. It's just yeah. a little bar of soap. It costs a dollar. Like if, if it's terrible, you'll just get another bar of soap. Um, so I like the kind of approachability of the medium. Amory, did, mm -hmm. did some of your, um, like, I, I had um, issues with some of my bigger boys mm -hmm. um, who have very big hands. Did you have an issue with um, any of your bigger students and the small size of the soap being an issue? Um, actually, no, I, 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 I never had anybody um, mention that it was difficult due to its size. I mean, except that it's limiting because it's so small. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but no, I never had that. That never came up. But yeah, this is a, a, a medium that you could easily adapt to upper elementary. just using an exacto knife right now that's all i had available at the moment i feel like i'm peeling fruit <laughs> it works really really well i just started using my stamp carbon tools my like rubber carbon oh, oh nice. good idea and, and you can control it a lot better i don't and know if i'm running my tools surely i'm not running my tools i don't Surely soap can't help hurt them. No, clean them. <laughs> yeah. right. It'll That's clean the everything. And it's so much easier than marble carving. Yes. You guys worked outside in Italy, right? Yes. We did. Yeah. During the heat wave that struck wow. Europe. I can't imagine. It wasn't, that bad. It wasn't that bad. We were up in the mountains, so it wasn't terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and we moved um, we moved umbrellas wherever we went. We moved umbrellas to keep us in the shade. Or no, yeah. have, yeah, there were an umbrella and then we'd move with the trees. Yeah, with the shade. With the shade. I but after we have been indoors, you would have had to use um, respirator or masks or something from the dust. So, I and I still want to do more research because they were they said, um, and honestly, what I found so far says they're right that marble dust isn't dangerous to breathe. Really? Yeah, that's what they said. How um, is that possible? That's exactly what I thought. But I couldn't find anywhere that said that it was. Huh. Um, so I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Is it, so is it because it's so fine or? I um, mean, it's just not toxic. Um, my impression was that it was just not toxic. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know why it wouldn't be toxic, but um, yeah, that's what they said. Oh. That's interesting. I'm not fully convinced. Okay. <laughs> and Megan, didn't you on that trip, didn't you get to visit some art studios? I did. Um, Atzano is way up in the mountains. And even though it might take about 45 minutes to an hour to get to a place that's about 10 minutes away, um, we went down to Pietra Santa, which is a marble community as well. And um, we visited some local artisans in their studios. Um, and it was really cool to see the variety of um, modern marble sculptures that were, were going on. So 
Weren't they really big? Some of they them were, were like monumental. Some of them were very big. Um, very big. Some of them were very small. Some of them were movable, had movable parts. Um, yeah, it was really, really interesting to, to see. Movable parts in marble. That's interesting. Yeah, almost like puzzles. If you think about like, like almost like geometric puzzles made out of marble with movable <laughs> pieces. It's really, it's very cool. can't imagine when you were showing the size of, of what your instructor did, all I was thinking is the size of David oh. in comparison and how long that must have taken to do that. If, if it took you guys a week to just break through mm -hmm. those Absolutely. little pieces that you guys had. No, I will say, yeah, Michelangelo might have had a little bit more skill than us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we worked a little bit faster because, you know, we were starting from nothing. Um, but yes, I mean, I, I think David and the Pieta always just impressive. But now that I've experienced it, oh, wow. Um, yeah. Those are, it's absolutely crazy genius level yeah yeah i think our appreciation for marble sculptures has is um increased a lot yeah and the process and the tools and the i mean yeah. even michelangelo was a learner at some point he didn't always that must have been just amazing mm. just amazing and, and to have been that entire area where you scavenged for your stones, the whole flat range was normally underwater, all of it? I don't, I don't know. Like I, I wasn't able to get that information. I, my impression is that it's always, or it's usually a shallow river. So, you know, maybe like ankle to knee height water, okay. um, you know, not rapid flowing or anything, but there's usually moving water there. And it was a hundred percent dry. It was very dry. Yeah. And um, yeah. And um, I don't have my marble carving anymore because it was taken by security at the airport um, when Why? I was trying to get home. Uh, they told me it was dangerous. So, how, so unless you hit someone over the head with it, how can it be? I, I don't know. But they, <laughs> and. and it was um it was about 20 plus pounds no sharp anything it was still so you know it was very much in its rudimentary state um but yeah they took it away so and i went to france i was going to bring back not the bocce but it was it's i think they called it bole uh -huh. and that was confiscated at security be, for the same reason. They said, no, it's, it's not, it's not allowed. It's a weapon. And I'm like, it's not a weapon. It's yeah, a present was, for my son. And they took it. It was just, oh, that must've been heartbreaking. It's devastating. And then, but I guess what made me extra upset about the whole experience was that you know, 20 steps away on the other side of security, they sell alcohol in glass bottles. Like if you want to make something dangerous, you could just bring one of those on, you know, like why, why was my rock more dangerous than glass? Wow. I don't know. So the key to this, the learning lesson in this is do not put things like that in your carry on, right. put it in your suitcase and check it. Yes. Absolutely. That will be what I will do if I if I'm able to yeah. go again. And and it wasn't a possibility to um, send it through the mail because it would have ended up in the same kind of issue. It would have um, ended up in customs, questionable for stolen goods in another country. So, how heavy was your stone? Um, mine was probably twenty pounds. It was light for marble, but still pretty heavy. 
And mine was about 10 pounds. Hmm. So what are you all finding with tools? What tools are you enjoying? I like my X-Acto knife. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the X-Acto is nice. Yeah, the X-Acto is really nice. I have this tool that I'm really enjoying. It's like a little scoop. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's a clay one? That's a clay one. Um, I mean, I don't know, it was with my clay tools that I bought, but I feel like it's just a general kind of sculpture tool. This is fun. It's There's something really cathartic about it. Yeah, it's yeah. very relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's also a lot less messy than um, I've done stuff with balsa foam. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that yeah. stuff is messy. Oh, that stuff yeah. like just breaks down and becomes yeah. dust. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. if it's older, it just yeah, which uh, mine disintegrates <laughs> in your hand. Yeah. I still really like it, but I've also, um, I was trying to find some earlier this year and I could not find any to purchase online. So oh, I don't really? know. Yeah. Um, so I ended up buying floral foam, which makes balsa foam look neat. It's so messy. Yeah. yeah I, I must admit I, I inherited some and I've used a little bit of it, but I keep saving it for you know, I don't know what. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the same thing we save everything for, just in case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And inevitably, we get rid of it. And then like a week later, oh yep. my God, this thing that I threw out last week that I saved for 40 years would have been absolutely <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Yes. And that's why we keep things for so long. Yes. <laughs> so what happens if the student removes a little bit too much mm -hmm. and then they get sad and think it's ruined? Well, so I kind of lead with that because it's inevitable that about 70% of students will find themselves in a place where they will feel that they remove too much. Mm -hmm. And so if they're aware that that's going to happen before it does, then they're not as disappointed when it happens because then I presented as an opportunity to problem solve. Mm -hmm. um, but there are occasions when it's just like, wow, that is, there's no saving it. Like, you know, your piece of your piece broke in half or something. Um, right. And I, I keep some, you know, some extras for, for those situations, but I really try to encourage them to just problem solve through and work slowly. And that's why I think it's important to give them the practice piece first. Right. Um, so that they know the limitations of the material uh, and they're, they are a little bit more careful with it when they get their final. Okay, that makes sense.
a bar of peeled soap in my plate. <laughs> I'd use it like potpourri. It does smell really good. It does. <laughs> I think that was another thing that made this nice the first time I taught it during COVID. It just smelled so clean and we were all just sort of in this time where everything seemed dirty and dangerous. And then it yes. was like, ah, oh, so. <laughs> this is so cute. How's everybody doing? You guys working or watching? Jocelyn, you're muted. I made, I'm, I'm in the process of making a little, my cat was all over me. So I figured, let me make a cat. Oh, no, so cute. Oh my goodness. You're making lots of progress. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of soap are you using, Steph? Yeah, what kind of soap are you using? Um, I use Caress because that's all I had in the house. <laughs> right. So I'm making a sort of abstract face kind of thing. Oh, that's cute. And it's yeah, shiny. Totally. Yeah, I think it's because it's old oh, or it okay. might be my tools because I'm using this kind of scooper. Uh-huh. I like that. I'm excited you're using those tools because I have some of those in my elementary art room. Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay, the district bought those for us. So I should be allowed to use them, right? With fifth grade. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> They're not, I don't think you'll have kids hurting themselves. I think they'll be all right. Mom, are you do are you working? My mother joined us, guys. Oh, oh Roberta. Nice. I'm I'm only uh, mainly watching and listening, but I'm coloring. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. This is this is what I'm doing. I oh. love. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, you do you're in the book I gave you. Yep. And I'm trying to be very quiet. I have to sharpen <laughs> my colored pencils, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. I think I once did a self carving a long time ago. Mom is a retired art teacher as well, elementary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Steph, hold hers up again. How did I you already get it like almost all the excess off so fast? Wait, let me, here, I'll add my pin so you can see it bigger. How did I do what? Hold on. I have to, hold on, oh, I have to pin so you. <laughs> like, you've gotten a lot of your excess and you actually have the sheep of your cat. I yeah. feel like working on getting rid of my. Well, I'm using the exacto blade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's I'm comfortable with that. We um, are you able to show how you're carving it with the exacto blade? Like, are you just I'm taking off big chunks? I feel like I, I feel like I'm cutting fruit or peeling fruit because that's kind of like how I'm how I'm holding. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm doing the same kind of motions just with a different tool. She's but um, okay. Excited, this, this cat. I don't know. I like it. You can see that it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still all in one piece. Yes. I'm trying to be very careful. I wanted to. I just feel like I have so much soap left. A little bit. I want the tail to be a little more separated. Has anyone ever, um, I was first trying to get soap, somebody to give me soap in my neighborhood because I wasn't sure about the soap I had. And someone said like, I have hotels. So has anyone ever done it or is that too skinny? Huh. I don't know. That's, those are really small, but I, yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Because, you know, like if someone collects their hotel soap, you know, yeah, maybe you can get like a bunch of it. <laughs> I was thinking those, I was thinking that too, but they're really flat. Yeah. Well, this one's annoying me because the world 
dial is so big and it's like right in the middle of the back side of my thing and I haven't gotten it away yet. Maybe if you wet it and rub it. Yeah. That will get rid of it. Or does that ruin the consistency of the soap? I don't know. She was talking about wetting it. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, as long as you know, you don't do too much. I think, I don't think it could. Uh, um, I had a student, um, she was very experimental with it. And so she used a rag at one point and just dipped the rag in water just to smooth it out. Oh, and how do you would do with clay with rough edges too? Right. So, um, yeah, she was kind of like my guinea pig, uh, <laughs> and and helped us all get through it because I never have time to play. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not I'm not a fan of the soap myself, but. <laughs> What you just you want some marble back? Good. I want the marble back because it's just too soft for me. And I make, too, like I said, I do too much. And so I butcher them. They're, they're pretty bad. That's what I feel like I'm doing. Um, I'm on my second bar already. I'm just going to be. <laughs> it does smell very good though. Doesn't it? I'm a big fan of the smell. That's kind of good if you were doing it out with fifth graders, you know, especially near the end of the school year when their hormones are changing. That's a good <laughs> smell soap in there. Or if anyone teaches middle school. Yes, I, I used to teach both elementary and middle, and I, I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, have even high school, school boys that are really ripe on a daily basis, especially when they come from gym. Ugh. Yeah. yeah super special and my room is like right next door to the boys locker room oh <laughs> oh yeah. gross yeah so that room can smell like uh, you know ass covered in um <laughs> what's what's this oh axe spray <laughs> and then topped off with weed smell huh. yeah so I, there's always a special special scent coming from the locker room from my into my room i like my little pussy cat So when do you like start carving? Like, are you only working on the front or are you like, when do you start working on the back? Um, so if I was actually following the directions I give my students anymore, which <laughs> unfortunately I'm not, I would have had them carve at both sides and then I would be working, you know, on all sides at once. Okay. Um, flipping back and forth um, and really, you know, but. I kind of went off the rails here and just started carving away. Um, but yes, I, I would normally be kind of flipping back and forth and really, you know, I encourage my students to look, you know, different angles and carve slowly, kind of, okay. you know, feeling it out from all sides. And, and how do you tell them that they'll know when to stop? <laughs> 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 um, I haven't had too many instances of them overworking it. Um, 
And it might just be that I don't give them too much time. You know, I give them two weeks and um, at the high school level, that's, you know, not a, not a long project. Um, How often do you see them in two weeks? I see them every other day. Um, so we have two hours. Like, pardon? Is it like two hours every other day or an hour and a half? An hour and 15 minutes every other day. Okay. That's shorter blocks in my son's school. Yeah, we used to have hour and a half blocks, and then um, they've changed it this year to hour and 15 minute blocks. So, um, because they added, we now have eight classes instead of seven. Oh, uh, um, right. We have that's what it is. Yeah. So, I think I need to stop. I don't want to take its tail off and I don't want its head to fall off. Last time I think I carved a bar of soap was in undergrad and that was 20 something years ago. <laughs> I've never done this. Yeah. We did a bar of ivory soap in my sculpture class. I don't it was just like intro to sculpture. Mm -hmm. I had to. We did it do, for plaster. I had to pour. I poured plaster in a bucket, uh -huh. and then yeah, I had, I had that too. And then I had to carve or chisel out a sculpture from that. Mm -hmm. And I that also did yeah. the chain link, <laughs> the standing chain links, which was also, I guess, it's a pretty standard idea. I did not like it, did not enjoy that, but this is fun. Yeah, the plaster was hard. Like, I don't remember what I made, but it was hard. It's, um, you know, if you're teaching high school, this could be like an introduction to subtractive sculpture for your students. And then, you know, to up the ante, if you have motivated students, you could, for the second part of the unit, have them do plaster. Mm -hmm. It's the same skill sets, just adding yeah. extra challenge. Different tools. Well, more more effort with the tools. Different yeah, tools. more effort. More muscle. Sure. <laughs> it's a harder, harder um, material. Yeah, it's a harder material. And but what's what's an advantage to plaster is that you can pour it any size or shape you want, you know, yes. within reason, like, yeah, you know, more variety instead of just, I have a piece of soap, you know? All right. Kitty cat's finished. Wow. Nice job. Oh, that was so cute. I didn't yeah. give it a face. I just wanted to get the body done. Oh, it's great. It's cute. Good job. I gave her a pause. She has a little front pause right here. Aww, I, I like you. that it's pink. I, I love that you have pink soap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like peachy. Caress is peachy. And I love the smell. Yeah. Oh, peachy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love that. My hands are starting to feel sticky. I'm using, I don't use soap I myself. I use shower gel. And this is like a bar of my husband's dial but it's not real it's not regular dial it's some good smelling but it's you want to hold up yours sticky. carolyn i'll pin you so it's see. it's thick oh, i'm trying to make a bar yeah. and yours has the, like, that like translucency yes kinda, so yeah, i'm thinking that's cool. making it sticky uh, yeah yeah it, it gets really sticky you so know. I don't recommend using that kind of soap. I'm not going to give up yet, but. Oh, Linda left. Okay. I'm just looking at the messages now. I'm trying to do it, but my hands are so dumped. How are you doing, Lori? <laughs> Jocelyn, you want to share? We're not ready. We're working on a B. Wait, wait. There's, wait, wait. Here's my my yeah. abstract. I just used an exacto and a love it. A little um, it's a very small, like kind of like a hotel bar. 
So uh -huh. wait, 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 wait. I want to pin you so we can all see it nice and big. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let's see. Okay. It's not like it's just. Oh, it looks wavy. Yeah, I just sort of shaved it with the exacto. I sort of just started, I don't know. I didn't really have a plan, but I'm just kind of stopping now. But it almost looks like a like a hand. Yeah, I kind of was like, yeah, it is really small. small. You know, it's like only two inches. Um wow. It kind of makes me think of <laughs> wow. Um, That's cute. It, it kind of reminds me of like an Egyptian like amulet, or it just fe oh, feels yeah. kind of like. I don't know. I could imagine, like, I don't know. It's sort of like <laughs> an artifact or something. I don't know. Yeah. But it was, it's fun. I, I, I think it's really relaxing. I was trying to think of like, what, um, if you just had a limited tool, like not clay tools, cause I don't have any clay tools at home. Mm -hmm. um, what Me could too. a classroom, like what could a, what could a classroom use that doesn't have, if they, if you don't have clay tools that would function like an exacto. Like I guess like a, a plastic butter knife plastic or something. Knife. A plastic mm -hmm. knife would definitely they have the serrated, the, the serrated stuff though isn't great. Yeah. It's not great. Um when I did this during COVID and I, I sent a little kit home with my students, I sent a um a toothpick, just like a wooden toothpick, mm -hmm. a, a serrated plastic knife, which was the the least useful. I I don't think I would send it again if I did. Um a wooden stylus stick. And the most useful, um, a paper clip, because yeah. it has little loops. You know, oh, it's like a big loop and a little loop. Really? Mm -hmm. They could yeah. carve it all. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like that. Steps, that's all we use. What paper about clip? a wooden, uh, not wooden, a plastic spoon that you could also use to scoop? Um, it depends on the soap. I yeah, think it's soft yeah. enough. Yeah, the ivory seems to be the softest. Um, Irish spring is super duper soft as well. Mm -hmm. um, Caress is very very soft. Okay, um, I'm I'm doing lever at the moment, and it's a little bit tougher. It's a little wow. a little sturdier, and I'm I'm kind of putting wow. some strength in there, so I don't Ooh. think it would work with that. <laughs> I got a little shape now. There's a little shape. All right. Nice. Smiling. <laughs> Let me my nose it. Lori, did you want to show your your thingy? Sure. Let's see what you got. It's a it's it's a bee. <laughs> I started doing oh, a bee. Oh, I see. Oh, it's so cute. I see the I see the wings. Oh my gosh. That's cute. cute. Yeah. What's what kind of I think soap I just need to like it? wet it a little bit, but what soap are you using? Um, it's a glycerin soap because I don't, we don't use soap either. We, I mean, we use shower, shower gel or liquid oh, soap okay. and stuff. So yeah. this was something that came in like gift box or whatever. <laughs> and, um, it smells really nice, but it's like, <laughs> you know, translucent too. Very cute. Mm -hmm. this is was yours sticky like mine? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. My little face is just getting weirder and weirder. Oh, I love it. it. It reminds me of the um the faces on Easter Island. Is that yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It looks like one of those faces that you'd like to draw when you doodle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what you like really wanted to do when we were carving marble? That was, was like your original thought of doing a face. I think it, it's just where if I just start making it, it ends up being a face. It's not, you know, planned or anything. You naturally gravitate to faces. Yes. This is so cute. So what's next month, Steph? I don't know. I am going through a massive life transition. I have to move. Yeah, I have to move. Uh, 
I, I saw have, you post something that, like you needed. Yeah, I was looking for a move or a recommendation. Yeah. To move during Christmas vacation. Ugh. What? Yeah. So I I don't know yet. I don't have anything planned. I might take like a, a hiatus um in from now to like the end of January because I can't think straight anymore. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um and I have to pack up my entire life and move oh yeah and and January is going to be hectic with the unpacking settling yeah. where I am um taking care of mom's going through something and we have to work that out also uh, so it's uh it's going to be a hectic month I tried to you know what might be helpful what? If we have another meditative painting session. Oh, yeah. And that's a good way to start off the year. Yeah. You know, kind of get your focus. That might be easier enough to do, but I'll have to let you know. How about okay. coloring books and coffee? What, Mom? <laughs> coloring books and coffee. We could do that, too. Absolutely. I mean, I did say I did start off the year saying I was going to balance, you know, stuff for the classroom with stuff for ourselves. Yeah, and we could totally do coloring book and, and coffee sessions. Or something stronger for those. I was me. just going to say you could even <laughs> add a little something something to your coffee because we all kind of need it. I definitely need it right now. Um, double whammy caffeine and alcohol. Oh boy. I think of our painting and put, I'm trying to think about alcohol. Right what? <laughs> painting and painting pies. and pie. Painting and painting pie. and pie. Painting and pie. Or doodle and drink donuts. Drink and doodle. Drink and doodle. Doodle and donuts. Donuts and doodling. <laughs> or let's see what else can silly i like drink and noodle drink and noodle drink that sounds noodle. funny <laughs> but i don't know if you want to promote it it just sounds funny <laughs> how about drunk doodling <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> I will I'll figure, I'll figure that something one. out because I guarantee you by the end of the first week of January, I'm going to need some, uh, some yeah. something, something. So get through the, I'll post a notice that'll say, you know, we're going to take a break until like the second week of January or something. Cause yeah, I got to focus. I got to put all my, my mental energy into this move right now. So, and I have to find other people to stalk and, and hit up to, to help out with lessons. There was a woman who commented on this post. I have no idea which one of the hundred Facebook pages I posted <laughs> it to, but she said that she does an extension lesson with the soap carving and created totem poles. Yeah, that was on the BAEA forum. Oh, was it? I yes, thought that I was a great it. idea. I did hit her up and ask her if she wanted to, to, to you know, facilitate a follow-up session, and she never responded. She did not respond to you. <laughs> no, she, she did not. She's probably sorry she said anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that would be kind of cool, but you will see. I don't know. I think we all need something fun and relaxing right now yeah. before the holidays and right after. Yeah, this I'll, think, I'll think of something cool. It just it just won't happen until about the second or third week of January. I'll let you guys know. Let us okay, know my, if you need my help. My battery is running out, so I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> oh no problem. We're it's at about that time anyway. It's eight twenty six, yeah. so we okay. can call it a night. Um, the emails are, I don't know if you copied and pasted the chat, I got, but I, got, uh, I forgot yeah. to write mine in there. Can yeah, you I got, send the step and she like posted somewhere or what, hon? My hands are dirty. I can't type my email. You want, uh, okay, I can type for right, you. Take care. 
Bye. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you guys next time. Carolyn, what's your email? I'll type it for you. Okay. Caro, C A R O. Uh huh. Scalin, S C A L A N. S C A L A N. 76. 76. Uh huh. At gmail.com. That's easy. At gmail.com. Caro Scalin 76 at gmail.com. Yep. You want to take a look and just proof it real quick? That is correct. Okay. I am copying it now. All right. Great. Because my well, hands are covered in sticky. I don't know if you at can least see you it. Smell good. <laughs> I feel like I need a shower. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just go get, get in a yeah. shower with all my shavings. Yeah. All right, ladies. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this for us. It was wonderful. And I loved seeing your 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 shit your presentation about your trip. That was, that was really cool. Thank you so much. Thank for you so us. much for inviting us. We had a yes, great time. Well, stay in touch if you want to share anything else. I'd be happy to have you. Okay. And if you just want to be part of our our group, our community, we'd I'd be happy to have you here too. Yeah. Definitely I looking so forward to this art club. I'm looking forward to the drunk doodling. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when that is and I will be there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All, All right. right. Really Bye. fun. Hey. Really, really interesting and fun. Thank you. Bye. Maybe, Bye. maybe we can talk about the worst Christmas present you got or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> All right. Good night, girls. Bye. Good night. Good night.